welcome to episode number 316 of Destination Linux. Destination Linux is an awesome video podcast from the Tux Digital Network. If you're new to the show, Destination Linux is a podcast perfect for all experience levels. Whether you're brand new to open source or a guru of sudo, this is the podcast for you. My name is Jill. I'm Ryan. And I'm Michael. And on this week's incredible episode of Destination Linux, we will be discussing our adventures at the Southern California Linux Expo, Scale 20X, and sharing some behind-the-scenes interviews you don't want to miss. Then we talk about a popular VPN going fully open source, plus we have our tips, tricks, and software picks. All this and more coming up right now on Destination Linux to keep those penguins marching. So this week, our community feedback comes from Pat, and I think this is an honorable spot to be in community feedback. Pat gets an honorable spot because this is fresh off of scale. The first feedback we're reading right after scale is going to be yours, Pat. And if you want to send in your own feedback, maybe have a special moment feedback event thing too, like Pat, then go to tuxdigital.com slash contact, get in touch, send us an email, or join our forums. We're also on Discord, so if you want to hang out, chat about Linux and game with the community, check out tuxdigital.com slash discord. The Pat goes on to say, hi, first of all, let me take the opportunity to thank you for creating a great show. Appreciate that, Pat. I was listening to the most recent episode and enjoyed your discussion on antivirus for Linux. I'm a system administrator, security analyst in Oklahoma. I'm of the opinion that most Linux servers need an antivirus, especially if they're connected to a network of Windows machines or exposed to the public internet. So most Linux servers. To back up my claims with data, a recent security lab that I conducted was setting up an SSH honeypot on Linode exposed to the public internet. Good choice, by the way, on Linode. I don't know if you know this, Pat. They happen to be a sponsor of ours. Really good choice there, uh, utilizing them. He goes on to say, from there, I was able to collect dozens of Linux viruses, everything from exploit kits to crypto miners and ransomware. You don't have to take my word for it. I actually shot a video that explains how you can set up your own SSH honeypot using Terraform and Ansible on Linode. If you could nice. check it out, I would greatly appreciate your feedback. I want to make my next video better. So be brutally honest. Never ask for that kind of honesty when Michael's on a show. Michael is you? like brutally <laughs> honest by nature. Ever. I am super and sweet. And so like I went ahead and reviewed the video and Jill reviewed the video. We did not let Michael <laughs> review the video because you Jill not is way more savage people. than I am. I'm a super positive person. You know, yeah, I look for yeah. the positive of everything. <laughs> By the way, we'll have a link to the YouTube channel in our um, notes section so people can go check this out. So I watched your video, really enjoyed the content and your overall approach uh, with it. I like how you explained the entire concept of what you were doing, kind of why you were doing it right up front. Uh, there was a weird audio issue that was very uh, distracting in there. So you said, be brutally honest. So I call it out. Uh, it almost sounded like there was frying going on in the background or a drip, yeah, but I think it was feedback. just feedback from a microphone yeah. uh, that was happening the entire time. This is why I'm not able to c watch it because you, I, I would be brutally honest, but you do it. It's fine. <laughs> Well, see, <laughs> I'm going to do it with kindness, you know, like uh, I'm, I'm putting some... They asked specifically for brutally honest. So just be savage, Ryan. You got this. <laughs> I can't believe you dare had noise in the background. No, uh, Pat, what I love that you tried to do is kind of cover it up with some music in the background. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, that did kind of try to lay, level off some of the interference and things that I was hearing. Yeah. So my recommendation is get a good mic and mixer versus using a headset. I know a lot of people when they start out their YouTube channels, podcasts and things, they use the headset mics. They're very comfortable. You're kind of used to them if you do any gaming or other things, even conference calls. But when you're doing video and stuff, there's a reason why you see kind of everybody go into these more independent microphones and mixer combos because we all have to contend with the noise issue. I have videos out there. I've tried to cover up things with music and stuff or use Alphonic or other things to try to clean up the audio. But at the end of the day, if you got a good mixer and you got a good microphone, it's going to really help clean up a lot of those and not distract people from uh, the message there. There's also there's also options where you can we might do a, an episode in the future where we cover some like hard, hardware on like audio microphones that you can get. So you can do like a beginner side where it's not not too expensive, where you can skip the mixer or you can go into like the more complicated setup or like what we have and you can get more yep. 
higher quality stuff. But what Ryan was talking about with the headsets is that I think the biggest point to make clear on this one is because when you have like gamer headsets, they care about comfort and a little bit of the audio quality on the, the headphone side. The microphone is basically a secondary thought or maybe even less. So it's going to be bad, good enough for gaming, not good enough for recording. So that's the yeah, reference. Good point. So um, the other thing I want to compliment you on, though, is your dress and your overall presence. Like you had a very strong presence in your videos, like you had done a thousand videos before. And you also were dressed really professionally, which immediately made me think, hey, this person kind of knows what they're talking about and they're taking this very serious. So I don't mean to harp on the audio thing. It's just one of those things. I've been there. I've done that. Um, and We've so I just that. wanted to share our feedback <laughs> yeah. with it. But overall, I thought your video was awesome. It's definitely worth everyone in our audience giving it a watch and, and subscribing to see what you got coming next. Yeah. And also to be clear, when we say that we've all had those kinds of issues, we've been doing this for quite a while. So we've had plenty of time to upgrade and stuff. We've had people comment on the fact that we have nice equipment. It's like, well, we've been doing this show for quite a few years. <laughs> yeah. If you go back far enough, you'll find me using a rock band microphone. So it wasn't it wasn't like we started with this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I really liked Pat. I really liked your use of uh, transitions and the animations you did in, in your videos uh, for your presentation and you just you just had a really nice way of explaining everything. So yep. it was excellently produced. It's just just the audio and that's something yep. easy to fix. Definitely. Now, in regards to antivirus in a server environment, I absolutely agree. It's definitely important on the server environment to take additional security precautions that you wouldn't necessarily have to do on a desktop. And I'm pretty sure we were clear on that, that we were talking about desktop in that last video. But if not, so. then this is double the reason why your email to us is fantastic because we can kind of emphasize that through here that in a server environment, definitely something different. You did use a honeypot though. So the idea with the honeypot generally is you want to leave it a little bit less secure by nature. So definitely mm -hmm. expect a lot more intrusions than someone who's setting up, say, a lockdown server environment where you're uh, taking all the proper precautions to secure your your right. server from people being intruding into it. So I think that that is one reason why you may have gotten a lot of ransomware and things that you were collecting as the point of a honeypot. But I would love to see you do a follow-up video because your video covers kind of how you set everything up. I would love to see a, a follow-up video actually showing some of those viruses and things that you collected, I would love to know how many of those would actually effectively executed in that honeypot and worked. Because it's one thing to upload malware and all these different viruses and stuff to try to get something to work, but I wonder how many of those would actually have worked on that server environment that you set up. It would be really cool for you to do a follow-up. I would love to watch that, so I hope you work on that next because yeah. it would be cool to know. That'd be really cool, especially I think that some of the stuff that we'd catch would probably be you know, Windows specific things that wouldn't even execute, but there's bound to be something that would totally. probably work. And yeah. I would be very curious to see how many and which ones would work, you know, because the, the, like you were saying, the honeypot thing is like kind of doing it on purpose. And with most server administrations are going to be setting up, you know, SE Linux or, or, or App Armor and that sort of stuff to kind of battle as much as possible so you can not get those things that kind of drive by, can infect. And mm -hmm. with a honeypot, that's kind of the purpose. Uh, but because you did this test, I think that'd be fascinating to see, you know, how far could you take it? Yeah. And I think that was the purpose of the honeypot here. Obviously, you can create a honeypot that literally is just a secure version that's uh, more easily to find out there on the internet, but you got everything secured. But if you had everything patched and perfect, how many of the stuff would execute would be fascinating. So awesome, mm -hmm. Pat. Thank you for sending in the video. I think it's a fantastic video, fantastic start to your YouTube career. Oh boy, I got so many tips for you on that uh, as you get bigger in the YouTube world, but uh, keep writing us. Let us know how things are going and let us know when you get your next video out there. Yeah, and also if you have any questions, feel free to send us a another email or contact us on Discord or on the forum and we'd be happy to help you You know, through your career. Uh, we got a lot of help over the years and we're happy to share the wealth, You know, the open source way. I mean, imagine what Michael would be without me. I mean, imagine how Aww. much I've helped him. His rock band, Mike. <laughs> this is and so true. <laughs> don't think about okay, it, Michael. To, Just to, get into the be, uh, really important message we have. I will give you, I'll give you credit for annoying me enough to get rid of the rock band, Mike. I will give you that. That that, that did happen. 
You're welcome. <laughs> but you're welcome, world. <laughs> you're welcome, world. So if you want to be awesome, just like Pat, you can check out Linode. Like this episode of Destination Linux is brought to you by Linode. So visit Linode.com slash tux. And if you, that's Linode.com slash T-U-X. And you can see why over a million developers trust Linode for their infrastructure, including Pat, for testing and creating honeypots. Linode provides solutions and services to accelerate innovation. You can build everything yourself, or you can use their one-click apps from the plethora of options in Linode's app marketplace to deploy everything from Plesk, WordPress, to Valheim and Minecraft servers. Linode even has VPN-friendly virtual servers. You can create your own secure connections over the internet, protecting you on public Wi-Fi so you can keep your data private and guarding you from malware and honeypots. <laughs> Actually, that's not how that works. But anyway, you, you know what I mean. If that wasn't enough, every plan comes with Linode's amazing human-powered customer support. And that, that might be a weird way to say it, but the idea is that, you know, you send a email or you send a tweet or you call them and you get response from a person. I don't understand. I, In the world of chat GPT and AI, we have real people here. I know. How can it's, you do it, this, Linode? It's crazy. It doesn't make any sense at all. But you get access to a person 24-7, 365. That's all the time. So visit linode.com slash tux to create a free account. Plus, when you use that URL, you let them know that we sent you, which is, of course, good for us, but also good for you because you're going to get a 60-day, $100 free credit on your account when you sign up. So again, go to linode.com slash tux to get started on Linode's awesome cloud platform. And you know what's great? You could take that $100 credit, follow Pat's video, create your own honeypot situation, and have a complete blast with that whole learning experience there. So this week we are fresh. Are we freshly or not We're fresh, freshly? fresh and so clean, clean. We're fresh and so clean, clean back from scale. <laughs> and scale was an amazing event. And so we had to take some time to share some of our favorite moments from this big event. And I think the first thing that we have to do is thank all of the amazing people that helped this whole thing come together. Number one, Jill, of course, because <laughs> without Jill, we have never tended scale probably. I mean, we've That's heard of it, but- Very likely. You know, we, we, we knew of it for years before Jill joined the show, and then Jill just convinced us that we had to go. And yes. <laughs> now we basically have agreed that every year we're going to scale. So. And Jill's Yay. kind of the life of the party at scale. Like- there's so many people that converge at scale out of the thousands and thousands of people that are there to mm -hmm. see Jill. So it's great that we get to be associated with Jill's fame by just hanging out with Jill <laughs> and be like, hey, we're, we're famous too. Uh, but also Bill from Pseudo Show came to help and he yeah. did an amazing job. Awesome. Michael and I were late to our booth on Saturday because yep. we were doing very important business. Very meetings. important stuff, yes. I don't remember what it was, mm -hmm. but very important. We also had a business <laughs> meeting in the gym. I made Michael work out and have a true, this is real, this is a true this story. True. I made him have a business meeting while we were pumping iron. And that to me was a win-win all the way around. Pumping iron, but, getting those gains, <laughs> getting those getting gains. Uh, but Bill from the Pseudo Show was there at our booth to kind of help make sure that it was covered. We were only Which like 10, very nice. 15 minutes late, but you know. I mean, the is, fact Bill that we, we, when we, when we were on our way to the booth, we saw Bill already there helping people, which was great. So thank you very much, Bill, for uh, picking up Ryan Slack, not mine. I was fine. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and his wife, Brooke, was there and yep. David. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. absolutely. And they all helped. Brooke, her, her major achievement was getting Bill to the conference. <laughs> There you go. So everyone was helping everyone. And Alan was there, a former student of Jill's, to help us do camera work, which you're going to yeah. see. Allowed us to do all these awesome interviews and have some uh, mm -hmm. additional B-roll and things that we can use in other videos later on of the whole conference. And then your husband, Steve Jill, who yeah. not only helped <laughs> you with your booth with the Linux Chicks of LA, but also our booth and, well, everything in between. Like if... The simple things you don't think about, like the hangers to put the signs up and stuff, were engineered by Steve on the spot. Yes. <laughs> we had a sneeze guard of a computer that Jill brought, engineered by Steve on the spot. Not only is he amazing and fun to hang out with, but just absolutely one of the most helpful people uh, helping yeah. everybody around the conference. So that was super, super fun. Yeah, he, he, he transported and packed all the things from our booths in the car and hauled people around and even took a week off his vacation to help us. 
Yeah, that's it awesome. It takes a village to make yes, scale it work. it absolutely does. But Steve, Steve by himself is like 25% of said village. So, oh, yeah. yes. Uh, he he not, only, not only has he helped to set up all the village, he also built most of it. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's so, I love my Steve husband. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to get into the overall impressions and experience of scale because this is a much different event than the one we went to the prior year. Now, the prior year, mm -hmm. much different. we told you was amazing, and it was. We had such a great time. But this year, the, that was during the whole COVID thing, blah, 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 all that. Yeah. This year, it was the regular normal scale on schedule with the normal size of scale. And let me just say that the crowds were huge in comparison. Like... There was no time at our booth to stop and eat or to do anything else without oh, having somebody true. else. I didn't take realize over. I didn't eat lunch for like three days. <laughs> yes. So you said that. <laughs> it, it was unbelievable how well it was managed, though. I mean, the scale mm -hmm. staff, unbelievable oh, job yeah. with that many people yeah. coming through. But managing a booth there compared to last year was like, it was so different. There was no time to do anything unless it was like tag team. I'd be like, Michael, you're it. And then yeah. Michael would be like, Bill, you're it. And then Bill would be like, Jill, <laughs> you're it. And we would all take turns because otherwise there was no stopping. We had people consistently and constantly flowing to our booth. Now, there's yeah. even a part where we wanted to stream and we were able to, we were able to uh -huh. stream for a little bit, but we weren't able <laughs> to stream Friday. every day because one of the days... People just never stopped coming to the booth. So we, we didn't have yeah. time to actually set up the stream. The stream. So yeah. Th that's pretty crazy. And it, like to compare this to other conferences and other events that I've been to for like the Linux conferences, the, the last year felt like it was five times larger than the other conferences I had been to. And this <laughs> year felt it was like five <laughs> times larger than the last year's scale. Yes. So this was a very interesting experience because we already kind of had an experience with it and then this year was like no you didn't the, oh, you don't it's understand. gonna get mu yeah. much, it's, much yeah. bigger <laughs> it's it's so true i mean like every minute we had people coming up to us oh you know i uh, love your network and i watched uh, watch you on destination linux and i got lots of pictures with our viewers and patrons who wanted to take pictures with us and some yeah. of them violated the rules though i just yeah. got to say <laughs> yeah. some that's violated true, the rules that's true <laughs> Yeah, we're we're going to have a list of names scrolling here on the side. Michael's exactly. going to edit in of everyone who violated the rule. You're supposed to get our picture. Then you can get Jill's picture. Some of you tried to skip the line and just get Jill's picture. Well, we tracked you. it. We knew that <laughs> yes. you were doing this. And that's, we didn't do any of that. But <laughs> this is uh, was a great experience. And also another massively great improvement from last year was that the Linux Chicks booth was right next to ours. So Jill was able to participate in both booths at the same time. And I just now realized we should have taken the rail down between the two booths and had like this big open back end thing. And I didn't oh, yeah. even think about it until yeah, just we'll now. <laughs> we'll do that next year. Yeah, ne <laughs> next year sure. we'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you said that, Michael, because every time someone from Jill's side would try to go over that rail, I would attack them because I'm very territorial. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah, a, that, that tower rail. defense kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, one of the unique things we have going he on is we have all lot. our, you know, recording equipment we had to set up. And it was it kind of nice to keep that separation for that yeah. equipment. But there's other ways we could do it next time. And so we can keep open up the fence. <laughs> It was Jill's escape from us. She's like, yeah. don't cross, don't cross don't, the border. Don't cross the bar. That's right. Yeah. Aww. yeah. So one of my highlights is that I was just excited to have Ryan there because he wasn't even sure if he could make it because it was la it was last minute that right. he made the announcement that he could come. Yeah, I was excited that he finally decided to show up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just... Well, I did have perfect timing. I showed up after the booth was set up and I left before we had to break down <laughs> yeah. the booth. When you say oh, perfect timing, I think you we had to tell people and just point it out, this is not an accident. So last year he did the exact <laughs> the same, same thing. Same thing. But I had the same problem last year. Like you my did. life has been yeah. turmoil, folks. Like <laughs> my look, there's nothing behind me because I'm supposed to be moving for the last six months, but all this stuff. Anyways, the point He's is got a good reason, but I've at got the lots same of time. turmoil, but my timing is kind of worked out impeccably, I gotta yeah. say. Yeah. But thank oh. you, Jill. 
Well, on the bright side, we did have Steve to help, and uh, yes, and yes. Bill helped, and 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 David, and we had we David, had people helping. Yeah. So even yeah. though Ryan was wasting his muscles, at least he was there for the t- during the the conference in general. So I, I yeah. you know, I I'm glad that you were able to make it. Thanks, Mike. absolutely. And one of, also one of my favorite highlights was just hanging out with with you guys. And and the night we went, we actually went to a stone oven pizza restaurant. Yeah. And we had parked, and then we had a hard time finding it. <laughs> that was an adventure. And we didn't en- end up going to Buca de Beppo. <laughs> oh no! So I have a <laughs> I have a video out there that I put on Destination <laughs> Linux Discord of Michael and Jill going Buca de Beppo the whole time. Uh, which was one of the restaurants so, we were going to go to, but Michael <laughs> decided he knew the area better than Jill, I, who's lived there her whole life. So no, he went to a pizza place. Steve and Jill both said that they didn't know much about the area because they're yeah, not locals to that yeah. area. So I didn't like try to take over the local thing. And all I did was saw a picture and I said, "Hey, maybe we could go here." I didn't. I wasn't like super into this particular place. Like we had to go there. I just said, oh, "Maybe it'd be cool." Something and different. everybody liked it. So. Good decision on it, my part. It was part. good. It was okay. It was all right. Um, you see, now he's downplaying, even though he said it was great Latin when we were there. Who put the pepper would have been better. I don't. I don't know. I have. I have no idea. But when he when he first suggested it, all I could hear in my head was the Family Guy fake Italian thing, where they're like "Puka de Peppo," because that's yeah. all I heard. <laughs> And so every time he would say it, that's how I would say it back. We have video of the event. It's out there on Discord. You all should check that out. Uh, we've got lots of video, in fact. There's going to be lots of cool videos coming out. Jill, your husband, you know, we've mentioned multiple times, but taking vacation, packing all the cars, hauling people around, everything, but also just so much fun to hang out with when we had yeah. the dinners and other things with Steve. Oh, yeah. Everybody <laughs> loves him. He's as much of a foundation to scale as you are, I feel like, because oh, yeah. yes. Absolutely. He's become he's, a celebrity in himself. <laughs> Even he had people coming, hey, you're Steve Husband. <laughs> Steve Husband. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because nice. of all the times he's you know, we've talked about him here on Destination Linux. So <laughs> Yeah. Perfect. That's really Absolutely. sweet. Yeah. And then Jill, one of the highlights I think from our booth was the Q Ryum PC. Yeah. That we had at our booth. So for those who don't know, the very first treasure hunt Jill brought this amazing machine that was made by a car manufacturer. Well, go watch the episode. What are you doing? Yeah. I'm not going to tell episode you all about it. It was amazing. 187. <laughs> go check it out. And, and, it, and we brought that PC to the booth, and it was part of Bingo. So people can go around scale and play Bingo, and they have to kind of find from the different booths different clues to learn something about that booth. And ours was uh, around this particular device being the first treasure hunt for Jill. That was an absolute ton of fun. <laughs> and Steve engineered a sneeze cover over the PC. Yes. So, because it's very valuable, rare <laughs> PC that we were able to have at our booth, which was really cool. And thank you, Jill, for letting us be able to show it off yes. because Aww, it was the spur no. of the moment. It's like, hey, Jill, could <laughs> yeah. we use this sort of thing? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. we, we wanted to come up with something that would be like, you had to dig in to find like what happened. So they come to ask us like what our bingo thing was. And, you know, it just kind of was perfect. They were like, what about Jill's first one she ever covered on the show? Because it's a really cool PC that I had never, I need, did, by the way, if you don't know, it is a computer made by the Daewoo company, which is a yeah. car company. Don't give them hints. They have to go back and watch the episode. <laughs> no, 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 they have to go back and watch it. I'm just giving them more reason to go back and watch it. It's super interesting. So check out episode 187. Aw, and that was special to me because that was my first treasure hunt before I was a full-time host. I was a guest host at that That's time. true. That's yep. true. <laughs> And Yay. we also did lots of streaming on Friday. It was Friday we did the streaming. And yeah, Jill took fun. everyone around again because boring old Ryan just wants people to stare at him on the camera at the <laughs> booth. But Jill's like, hey, you guys probably want to see the rest of the conference. And so it was able to I can't take believe we didn't there. even think about it again. Like I know. It's it still like, took Jill to think about it we, again. We think we're so entertaining that people just went, you could go watch that video on my channel, Dust Geek channel. It's out there if you want to check that out. Some really good footage in there and some funny moments as well. Uh, Michael, me, and Michael, and me and Jill playing with filters. Oh, that, that was fun. That's one of the, the oh, yeah. highlights, I think. And also, like, when I came back yeah. to the booth after I saw those filters, I started playing with them. And Ryan was like, we already did this. Like, I yeah. wasn't here. <laughs> We're doing it again. You're not original. Let's play yeah. with bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, Jill, you did an amazing job uh-huh. with that. And also, we had a bunch of interviews, which you're going to see some of those interviews. Yeah, All of these boots sure did. <laughs> that we went around. One of the things I want to mention about that is that Michael kind of took on this new personality I hadn't seen mm-hmm. in him before. Oh, really? So I don't even know what you're talking about. We give Michael this microphone and a camera, and we just let him loose. And amazing. he's gone for hours. Yeah. Maybe I'm exaggerating. <laughs> Days, weeks. Days. And then he comes back. Yeah. <laughs> having interviewed, like, I don't know, the first time, like eight, nine, ten different booths and things. And the whole idea was we were all going to kind of transfer the responsibilities of interviewing. But Michael took to it so perfectly. You just give him a camera and a mic and just let him go. And yeah. It was so was, fun. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of funny because <laughs> when I first did it, I came back after five or six the first time, and Ryan was like, "Hey, what do you? What, how's it going?" I was like, "I like this. This is fun." And then, yeah. he, and then Ryan was like, uh, "No, you should just keep going." It was a very subtle kind of subliminal message of, "I don't want to do it, so you go do it." And it worked out well because he didn't have to do any of the interviews. <laughs> I mean, at the point you had done so many, you're so schooled now on the questions and the flow. I'm like, yeah. "Why would I go in there and fumble yeah. for four of them when you've got it down pat?" That's fair. And then. Jill's done it for years at scale before and everything. So Jill, you also went and finally got the mic from Michael, yeah. I think on Sunday. <laughs> I reluctantly gave the mic away. That's Pulled true. it from his cold, dead fingers. I Pulled reluctantly. Pulled it from his weak thumbs yeah. and we're able to go interview some. Well, Jill said so. she wanted to do it. You, you, yeah. were, you, were at, you were saying that you had a couple that you wanted to go do. And I was like, okay, yeah. fine, I guess. And then <laughs> I gave her the microphone and I didn't see it again until the, the, boot, the whole stuff, stuff of being taken down and everything. And it made me realize that... I kind of like doing interviews and mm-hmm. maybe yeah. next year we'll have more time dedicated because I wasn't able to do every booth. I wanted to because I just mm-hmm. wanted to, but there was a lot of booths and we got at least 15 to 20 interviews anyway, mm-hmm. it, but that's how many were still there. You I know think what? we did maybe did half of them, maybe. Let's let's give people in a, a sample of what we're talking about here and play one of those interviews right now. Hi, I'm Michael Tunnell with Tux Digital. I'm here with Lynn Bit to talk to them about how their experience at scale is going. So first of all, we have Brendan with us and Ryan. How is the experience at scale for y'all this so far? Scale has actually been uh, really awesome in contrast to uh, the last conference I had attended. Um, it's just been great to uh, interface and um, you know meet a lot of these uh, open source companies and just the community um, in totality has been great. Uh, really kind of a, a welcoming, cool vibe and been learning a lot of awesome things. Um, so how about you, Ryan? Yeah, Scale's been really awesome. Uh, one thing I love about this conference is that there's a community aspect to it. It feels very um, just getting to connect with people on a human level. Um, not not so corporate or, or salesy or anything like that. And yeah, it's been great. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things about scale as well. It's it's got a it's got a corporate element to it, but it's also driven like by the community exactly. for sure. Exactly. Uh, so tell us tell our audience uh, what do you, what do you do here at Linbet and what kind of services do you offer? Okay. Uh, again, yeah, my name is Brendan uh, at Limbit. Uh, work in business development. Um, in regards to the services Limbit offers, our flagship software, DRBD, which stands for Distributed Replicated Block Device, um, ultimately replicates at the block level, uh, synchronous replication, and uh, solves for high availability. Uh, in a nutshell, in the event of any kind of system failure or outage, ensures there's no downtime or data loss. Um, we also have uh, one of our newer offerings, Lin Store, as you can see, maybe pan over to the awesome sticker uh, and, and logo there. But yeah, that's our SDS solution uh, for persistent storage and um, you know, generally uh, for larger clusters. So what would you say is your target audience for your, con- your products and services? Yeah, so we can really work with a wide range of people. We work with a lot of uh, sysadmins, storage engineers, storage architects, and, and really any company or organization that um, can't have any downtime or data loss, which is just about everyone. You know, we work with uh, higher ed, financial inter- institutions, healthcare, um, a lot of big software companies. So yeah, a lot of people across the board from, you know, Fortune 50 companies to mom and pop shops in the middle of nowhere with a couple servers. That's awesome. Yeah. So how would you say that you stand out from the competition? You know, DRBD is just right above the, the bare metal and, um, you know, really low level in the stack. Uh, you know, equals high performance uh, versus a lot of our competition. And, 
you know, performance being a, a crucial element, I think is kind of a, a game changer on that front. Oh, fantastic. So that's like the kind of the, the questions we had for your services. We also have some questions we like to refer to as lightning questions or lightning round that are nonsense. So first of all, what would you choose between a cupcake and a muffin? I'm going cupcake all day uh, okay. for the frosting. Sure, sure. So what would you choose, cupcake or muffin? Muffin. <laughs> fantastic. So Ryan made the better choice. Uh, uh, so. <laughs> Depends because, on the muffin. Because well, if it's a yes. Muffin, oh, yeah, of course, there are terrible muffins, yeah, but yeah, you can get like chocolate macchiato and stuff yeah. like that, wow. you know? I didn't know we had fancy muffins. Oh, of course. I, I was thinking the default Costco spectrum. Carrot cake? Costco carrot cake? Yeah, there you go. I don't know. Have, have, have we convinced you? Have we, have I'm we, reconsidering. Uh, okay. Well, okay. let's revisit this, but the blueberry muffin might kind of, I don't know, I'm, I'm pivoting a bit. Uh, <laughs> maybe a blueberry muffin with frosting. Oh, I, I like it. Do the combo. That's good. Because the frosting is really what makes a cupcake anyway, yeah, right? Precisely. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's everything. It's, For sure. Yeah. And the next one is a uh, favorite Linux distro in general. That's yeah, uh, but I would say Ubuntu. It's my favorite Linux distro okay. because it's what our customers like the best. So, yeah. Sure. yeah. Sure. sure. Ubuntu is a, as a standard, you yeah. know. Uh, so, this one's uh, more gen like kind of like a broad question, yeah. and you could be anything you want, right? Uh, favorite music genre. Woo. Um. We're gonna have to consolidate and distill that down to one single answer. Um, I think I'm going to go with hip hop. Hip hop, all right. What's your favorite one? Hip hop. <laughs> we got a consensus. I promise, I'm not just copying it. We got a consensus. So the awesome thing about Linbit is they allowed us to get to scale. They helped fund getting all of us there. Amazing company and really hope you enjoyed that interview because without them, well, we wouldn't have been able to make scale as special as it was because That's we right. gave away so many awesome things that we were able to spend funds on for the community out there, like fidget spinners, which we completely ran out of, and bags, yeah. which we ran out of. And yeah, we had a thousand, a thousand fidget spinners and they're gone. Gone, everything's <laughs> gone. We also had, like, as, as Ryan mentioned, we have bags. We also had those Linux 91 uh, wristbands. We also yeah. had a bunch of stickers, and everything was gone. We ran out of everything, which last year we had a bunch of leftovers. And, well, actually, the fidget spinners ran out, too, because fidget spinners are very popular, apparently. But yeah. the other stuff, we had a bunch of leftovers, and they were just all gone this year because I suppose it's because there's just so much more you know, interest in it and more people in the, the scale this year. I actually forgot to get the one of the fidget spinners that we got for this scale. So I didn't oh. even get one of them. I got and one. I, got, I just got one. I yeah, just got, I got one. one. So. I, I, I realized <laughs> that I, I, after the interviews, I came back and Ryan said, hey, we're out of the fidget spinners. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I don't yeah, have one oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew fidget spinners would uh. be so hot these days? I even a few people made comments like, are these still a thing? Well, apparently, because everyone wanted one, because I love them for conference calls. Exactly. Well, we they're actually, nice, high quality ones. Yeah, yeah, we had somebody come in and say, I don't get fidget spinners. And I said, yeah. just just try it. <laughs> and right. they started like, like playing with it and they're like, okay, no, I get it now. Get it. It's, they, <laughs> they always thought fidget spinners were silly. Like I I I did the yeah. same thing. And then when I started playing with them, like, oh, I get it. Fidget spinners are fantastic. And if, you've, if you're listening to this or watching the video version and you've never actually used a fidget spinner, we just want to tell you that they are fantastic. Linux you should, pro tip right there. That's exactly. a Linux pro tip. Use a fidget it, spinner. If you are yeah. doing something on your at a computer and you're just waiting on something to render or whatever, and you're just your hands, you just feel your hands need to do something, a fidget spinner is a fantastic way to sort of do something while also doing nothing at all. It's like yeah. if you use so Gentoo true. and you're compiling everything, <laughs> what a great way to spend time while it's compiling. What, Speaking what of... What a great way to pass the time. Gentoo was right across from our booth there. Yeah. They had a presence and we may have some you know, developers from Gentoo come on our show uh, in the That's future. Cool. So a lot of those people out there who talk about Gentoo, want us to use Gentoo, try Gentoo, we all have. But we'll have someone on from the show to officially talk to you about that. But Jill... We talked about our booth, but there was another <laughs> special booth there, the Linux LA Linux Chicks LA booth, which has yes. been a staple of scale for a very long a very time since one. the beginning. And you had a very special guest stop by. 
I sure did. It was John Mad Dog Hall. I thought you were going to say me, but okay. Sure. <laughs> what are the, the little wow, savage visionaries? Joe. Just skipped Ryan completely. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, Ryan. So yeah, John Mad Dog Hall, you know, came uh, to the Linux Chicks LA booth. I was the only one there at the time because it was Sunday morning, and he he wanted to tell us a story about how he helped the Linux chicks in the early years and how Linus Torvalds helped the Linux chicks in, in the early years of our formation. And those stories are incredible. And hopefully in the future soon, we will have him on to interview him. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Uh, because, we you know, talked to him about that, and he yeah. said that he'd be interested, so I am looking forward Absolutely. to it. Absolutely. Because it would be a fantastic interview. Yeah. and Because uh, for those who don't know, Mad Dog is, basic, is, is kind of like a legend in yeah. the Linux world. Linux. So it would be yeah. great to have him on the show. <laughs> yeah. I, I got to chat with him for 30 minutes. And that was the first, you know, he's he's been to about half the scales. And I've gotten to, to talk to him a little bit. But this time, he actually sat down with me and told me these stories. Yeah. And it was so special. He so. And he knew my name because I've... Because you're friend, Jill. Friends... friends <laughs> Because you on are Facebook. Jill of Destination Linux. <laughs> yes. That is why. Right. <laughs> and yes, I'm on Destination Linux. And uh, he happened to be there right when I kept, got presented with this. Uh-oh, drum roll. <laughs> do, 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 do. Hey, I didn't get one of those. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get one of those. Best scale spirit, the Linux chicks. Yeah, Linux Chicks LA Best Scale Spirit Award. And we work really hard. We've, we've th This is like... Our fifth one. <laughs> nice. Hey, Ryan, I think we need to compete for the best scale spirit next you know year. Yeah. We're, we're going to get some pom-poms and then start learning how yeah. to do cartwheels and backflips. And then we're going to be like go. doing that all across scale and like people know like, hey, this is how we show our spirit. Like you took yeah. to that microphone. I'm going to let you take to dressing up as a cheerleader and getting us. I didn't say dress spirit. up like a cheerleader. I just said get pom-poms. I mean, uh -huh. come on. I like the cheerleader part. If we're going to do this, we got to do it right, Michael. Yeah. Dress up for us. But it only a cheerleader set only works when there's multiple. So you have to join me in that. <laughs> We gotta, we gotta create our own spirit in, in unison and unison. We're like, yeah, yeah scale. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, you guys, I'll uh, check out my uh, picture I took with Mad Dog and the award. So what happened is I did two interviews Sunday morning. I couldn't even get to our booze early in the morning because I was asked to do interviews. So I did those wonderful interviews. Then I go to our booth and I'm the first one to open it up for the for the day. And they presented us with the award, and here comes Mad Dog around the corner, <laughs> and he and he looked at it. Ooh, another award! <laughs> so, <laughs> That's awesome, Jill. Congratulations but, on that. So, well, so that a, is awesome. A, <laughs> there's a great picture of me and him together holding the award, and nice. just with me and him uh, talk chatting, chatting with each other. So that was very, very, very special. It was the best day ever. <laughs> Besides meeting That's me all. when I yes. me. <laughs> yeah, us. second to that. And then uh, you also got $500 in donations for your raffles. Uh, you had yeah, a 49-inch sure TV, Samsung sound system, and a laptop while we yeah. had fidget spinners, bags, and stickers. So yeah. <laughs> we are really going to have to ramp up. Okay, that's quality. true. We do need to improve our booth as well because we were sitting next to Jill and we were thinking like, yeah, just, Jill's being able to be in both of, uh, both of those booths. And that happened. She was a part of both booths. Yeah. However... <laughs> One was a little bit more elaborate than the other, <laughs> and I will acknowledge that. So we do need to upgrade. Aww. But we did have a giveaway. So, yes, we did. You know. Yeah. It, and yeah. one thing we need to, we could do next year is, is have more Linux plushy pe penguins. No, like, no, 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 uh, Jill. You have my TVs studio. and speaker bars. We're going to go with, like, I don't know, Ooh, 3D know laser projectors and... Yes. A Steam Deck. Let's give away a Steam Deck. A Steam Deck, yeah. Kissing yeah. booth. We could set up oh, a kissing booth, Michael. Oh, I love that idea. I love that idea. The kissing booth. We did a photo booth at the Linux Chicks LA booth a couple years ago, and it was amazing. Michael so will I, be I, in the booth. I like having ideas of me, me being able to meet more people, but there is a limit because uh, I, I kind of gotten sick from scale. And I think Aww. that's a guarantee for that to happen. So <laughs> let's let's think let's you know let's think some more ideas, and we'll we'll yeah. brainstorm options later in the future. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and veto that one. Okay. We need the water dunking booth for Michael. <laughs> that that I would do. <laughs> that I would do. I would yeah, do. People I, would I, pay. 
endless amount of money to dunk Michael in a tank. Yeah. <laughs> I think there is an option for swag that we should get. We should just get bobbleheads for us. Yeah, and then, and then we you give can out throw bobble them heads. at a target to to put Michael. Why on. would we want to destroy though? These are these would be classic legendary Jill, items. You said Michael and that you wanted Jill to get a bobblehead. Destroy them. Jill wants to wow. throw it immediately. Wow. That's how much you frustrate her, Michael. I, it, apparently. So Apparently. we gave away a System76 keyboard, thanks to Michael. Michael donated awesome. a keyboard there, so we we're able to give that away. And one thing I learned about giveaways is it's so much better to do a giveaway when you have the, what do they call Condolence prize or something like that. Consolation yeah. prizes. Oh, consolation <laughs> prize. There was like so many people surrounding our booth to get this keyboard, including kids that give you those little puppy dog eyes and all that stuff. And you're like, you want everyone to win, and you only got one thing to give away, and I wish we had like some... I don't yeah. know. Like three or four consolation yeah. prizes or something like that. Yeah, Next year. Definitely. Yeah, we're going to we're going to have some cool giveaway items. We don't know what those are yet, but we're probably going to outdo Linux chicks. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Joe will never let that booth be outdone with the Linux chicks. So <laughs> I, think I have true. no hope. That we'll do that. We're just going to stick to the simple stuff and let Jill win the prizes. These little mini penguins were, were, were our consolidation prizes from when people didn't win. Oh, so, so it's you thought for kids. your booth mm -hmm. to have those consolidation yeah, did, prizes, but, but, but you didn't, didn't want to tell us. us. I, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I yeah. Sabotage. We see I'm how sorry. it is, Jill. We see how it is. I'm sorry. That's called sabotage where I'm from here in the <laughs> South. <laughs> Y'all think uh, Jill is so nice and kind, but you don't realize she's yeah, devious. Yeah, we turn that camera off. She's very devious. <laughs> All right, well, we have one more final treat for you. The rest of the interviews we're going to show on the Tux Digital YouTube channel. So make sure to subscribe to that. It's really an awesome way to see all of the cool open source <laughs> and server projects, every, all the technology companies that show up to scale. It's a great way to kind of get to know their companies and what they do. So definitely go to the Tux Digital YouTube channel hit that subscribe button, punch the subscribe button in the face, slap yeah. the subscribe Drop button like it. Will Smith, whatever you want to do, John Cena it, whatever, <laughs> just make sure you click it and then you're going to be set up to get those interviews as we release them. But one interview, we're going to play you one more right here is with GitLab. It was an amazing Ooh. interview, amazing job, Michael, on this Thank interview you. as Thank well. You. So let's go into that right now. Hi, I'm Michael Tunnell with Tux Digital, and we have GitLab with us right now. We're going to find out some information about GitLab with Brian. So, Brian, tell us about what your services you offer at GitLab. Sure. We're a software development platform that uh, encompasses the entire software development lifecycle. So with GitLab, you can not only do source code management, but you can uh, manage your code, you can plan your projects, you can create uh, new uh, software projects, and you can also use our integrated CI CD to um, you know, enhance your security and increase deployment velocity, things like that. Fantastic. So how would you say that uh, GitLab stands out from the competition? So the biggest is that we're open source. So we're an open core product. We're MIT licensed. So our GitLab Community Edition is entirely open source. What sets us apart is that we um, are dedicated to that open source project, and we have a great community uh, helping us make it better. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm using GitLab all the time for my stuff as well. And uh, so what did you say the target audience would be for GitLab for services and products? Yeah, so we're a development life, we're a development platform for the entire DevOps lifecycle. So we're, we, our customers, our enterprise customers that are interested in having a single platform uh, to be able to navigate the entire DevOps lifecycle. So uh, while we, but while we have a lot of enterprise customers, you know, we're very, very um, accessible to uh, open source projects and open source communities. I'm the uh, senior open source program manager at GitLab, which means I work upstream with open source projects that are using GitLab all the time to innovate and push the state of the open source art forward. Fantastic. So you've made it through the gauntlet of our questions for your, your products and services, but we have some yeah. extra questions that are a little bit silly, so I'm glad you have, you have a hat ready yeah. for this. <laughs> All right. I got to put my thinking cap on with my Tanuki. Per All right. Yeah, my Tanuki thinking cap. I'm ready. What do you got? All right, perfect. So if you could choose only a cupcake or a muffin, any kind of flavor doesn't matter, but just only a cupcake or a muffin, which one would you pick? Uh, cupcake for sure. I love icing. No question. Okay. Yeah. What about if you had a muffin with icing? Uh, mm, I don't know. That's a cupcake. A muffin with uh, with icing is a cupcake. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. All right. So, what is your favorite Linux distribution? My favorite Linux distribution is Fedora, uh, and, but I'm currently using Pop OS, which I also really love. 
Nice, nice. So what, are, what is your favorite music genre? Ooh, my favorite music genre is Vaporwave. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. I love that stuff. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's very cool. We've had a couple cool answers. I like when the answers are very specific genres because sometimes it's like rock. Like, you get a little more specific. I like yeah. the fact that you did no, that. No, I, yeah, I love Vaporwave. I have, I have a cassette tape collection. It's about 300 Vaporwave cassettes, and I write a Vaporwave-focused newsletter. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, could you, after the, the thing, I want to send that to me. All right. All right. <laughs> So we really hope you enjoyed that interview with GitLab. Again, really appreciate everyone who participated in the interviews and Michael and Jill for going around and doing those interviews. But you know, it was one thing that I had on me at scale at all times and was absolutely amazing. Actually, two of our sponsors were critical to us being able to operate all the things that we did there at scale. Linode, all of our server access, our next cloud, mm -hmm. everything was right there in Linode. But also, I had to have my passwords on me. There were many yeah. things we were trying to set up and get rolling. I was sitting there at the booth, and I was able to get on my computer and get into the accounts I needed. Thanks to Bitwarden, no matter where I am in the world, traveling halfway across the world to California, doesn't matter. I have my passwords on me at all times. Thanks to Bitwarden. Go right now and get started by going to bitwarden.com slash tux. That's slash T-U-X. Bitwarden is the greatest password manager out there on the planet. Oh, yeah. And allows you to have peace of mind knowing that your online accounts are secure. They provide you the tools to store all your passwords in a secured vault, auto generate those passwords and usernames for you, and even automatically fill those in on the login form so you don't have to. The other great thing about Bitwarden is the note taking application. So, in some cases, I leave really important notes for myself in Bitwarden as well for certain accounts that I log into. So you have that ability to do it in a secure vault as well. And you can access your data across all your devices, your web browser, your mobile apps, your desktop applications, even the command line. So I had it on my phone. I had it on my laptop browser. Anywhere I was, I had Bitwarden with me. And Bitwarden seals and encrypts your private data with end-to-end -end encryption before it ever leaves your device so you know you're the only person with access to your data. Go to bitwarden.com slash TOX to get started. And you can get started for absolutely free. And it's a really good free service, but you're going to love this so much that you're going to want to sign up for the premium account, which is just $10 per year, less than a dollar per month. Gigabyte of encrypted file storage, two-step login with YubiKey U2F Duo, well, health reports, Bitwarden Authenticator, priority customer support. I'm telling you, it's a lifesaver. Go right now, bitwarden.com slash T-U-X to get started. And thanks to Bitwarden for sponsoring this episode of Destination Linux. And as you know, we love open source and we love it when companies choose to do more with open source. And so we want to call out those moments when they happen out here on the show. And this week, NordVPN has announced that they are open sourcing three of their applications in hopes that users in the community can help evaluate, tweak, redistribute, and if they want to improve their applications. A quote from their announcement states, if, for example, you think the Linux NordVPN application could be improved upon or its functionalities change in some way, you can experiment with the code and create your own version. So what exactly are they open sourcing here, Ryan? Well, they're open sourcing the entire NordVPN application to Linux. The LibTelio, a networking library used across NordVPN apps on all the operating systems, so not just for Linux, and libdrop, which is a library used to share files over MeshNet that they have as an option for their account. And MeshNet, by the way, they just recently made completely free. So even if you don't use NordVPN, you can still download their app and play with MeshNet, which is a really neat tool that allows you to connect your computers, basically creating a, an encrypted tunnel between different devices. So let's say you're on the road and you want to connect to your computer at home. You can do that through a MeshNet, an encrypted tunnel. If you have uh, work for a big business, a lot of times they set up things like these type of VPNs for you to be able to connect into your work computers and things, but you can have that for your personal systems or even your personal servers or even your businesses utilizing this. It's really cool to see NordVPN do this because they're one of the biggest VPN providers out there. Oh yeah, and for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, I have a video out there on choosing the best VPN. Of course, this is before NordVPN decided to open source all this stuff. And there are some really great VPNs out there there are also some really sleazy VPNs, but NordVPN has always been one yeah, that there are one some of the, really sleazy ones. Yeah, really sleazy ones. NordVPN is very trusted. They no company is without. There, there were things that happened in the past. They weren't big, big issues, 
what I recall, there was a particular server they had, I think, that uh, ended up getting um, compromised or something some years back and stuff. But they've done a really good job with transparency. They also said that it was a the maintenance of the co-location wasn't updating and patching the stuff. So it was kind of like a it was their fault for not being more on the the effort of that happening. Right. But also it wasn't them doing it, you know. So there's there's a little more nuance to it. So but the fact that and they, they were shut even, that whole thing down after oh, yeah. they shut it down. They left they the company complain. completely. Yeah. Yep. So they they transitioned to different data centers and all that stuff. So the 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 as Ryan was talking about the transparency of Nord, you know, taking the information that they had about this sort of stuff and then giving it to everybody is very critical and very important. So when they announced this being open source, I was like, oh, wow, really? This is a game changer. Because one of the things about Nord is that for the Linux support, it's not great. It's good and it works well, but it's not like super user friendly. Mm -hmm. And having this being open source, making it the community be able to participate and make that user friendly would be fantastic. And hopefully that the Nord VPN, you know, kind of collaborates with the communities to make that sort of thing happen. Cause that would be well, wonderful to have another option. The more they open source, the more trust people are going to put in Nord VPN as well. Oh yeah. Cause yeah. it's going to be so, audited for sure. Like for the people who think that this open sourcing isn't that important because it's just like a code dump. They're not just taking co code and just throwing it out there and then making a whole other thing. What they're doing is making it open so people can audit the code and help improve it and find bugs and that sort of stuff. So the fact that they're doing it this way is why we wanted to cover on the show. Because there are companies that will be like, oh, we're not going to use this anymore, so we're just going to throw that code out there and see what happens. This, yeah. is, this is our code. Help us make it better. Well, one thing that really stuck out to me is the way they presented this topic. And we'll have a link in the show notes, but they didn't present this topic as just, look at what we're doing. We're going open source. Aren't we great? They, they actually spent a lot of time explaining to their community, which is vast, why open source is important. What are the benefits of open source? And one of the things they said, for instance, as a quote is, putting this material into the hands of the Linux community, one of the strongest open source communities currently active, encourages talented coders and developers to scrutinize our code and make our services better. But not only that, which that's an awesome quote, and I love yeah, that. Yeah, that's awesome. I, that's how I think of the mm -hmm. Linux community. We're the best, the strongest, <laughs> the greatest, all of that. Any of those words you want to add in there. The most humble, the modest. That's not true. But <laughs> we are definitely the best. And, you know, the fact that they spent a lot of time, I mean, paragraphs of articles talking about the history of open source, why it's important in things, and how they made this move, I think is really important because a lot of people don't even know what open source is still to that's this true. day. Yeah. And the other important thing is this is not just front end. This is back end as well. Yep. You know, with, with their mesh net and um, all their different apps. Th this is huge. I mean, this is a, a going from proprietary to open and with all of it, almost all of it at once. Yep. Th that, that's pretty impressive. And um, another quote they use that I loved is uh, they in the article it says, Open source software is the bedrock of innovation and collaboration in the software development space. And we want to be part of that community. You're whispering sweet way nothings to go. in my ear, NordVPN. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, that's the way to my heart right there. Keep, Absolutely. Keep, keep whispering that. Um, I actually, after this, went and subscribed to NordVPN just to check out their services. And if people are wondering, is this like uh, an ad? Because we are being overly gracious, I think, with NordVPN. It's because, number one, we're very excited when anybody comes and joins uh, mm -hmm. the open source community. Number two, no, they're not sponsoring us. Uh, so we're just talking yeah. about But I wanted to check out their service ever since they made this change. And I wanted to see what they were kind of talking about when it comes to Linux. Their app on the phone, really nice, really beautiful. Um, I could see what they were saying when they're saying they wanted some help from the Linux community with their application on Linux, because while they do have the instructions and all the setup files and things for Linux, it really is just a kind of a shell bash script that kind of sets things up mm -hmm. and it opens a terminal that opens a browser that, you know, you kind of do your yeah. credentials. And then in the terminal, you could type things like NordVPN connect and NordVPN disconnect or NordVPN mesh net to set those things up. But it's not as intuitive as other VPNs out there that have a really nice GUI that yeah. are behind them where you can just click buttons. You're kind of stuck doing terminal commands. And I wouldn't say it was very intuitive, 
So I'm excited that they want to be a part of the community. And I think that them open sourcing stuff is going to allow a lot more people to contribute and probably mm-hmm. give them feedback like I just did that, hey, we like GUIs too in Linux. Like we don't just want to always work in the CLI. We can because we're mm-hmm. cool like that, but we like GUIs too. I like GUIs. I like to click on GUIs. GUIs are fun. I like terminal stuff. I also like fun graphical buttons. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Always that's a good buttons. way to put it. <laughs> yes. Everybody likes buttons. You see a button, you got to push it. So give us buttons, Nord. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the other thing I want to mention is how fast Nord VPN is because I'm doing this entire series here, uploading all of this video to Michael's computer and all the online stuff we're doing to produce the show on Nord VPN, which is, awesome. I told Michael, I warned him ahead of time, if anything goes wrong, that I was doing that. I was messing with stuff. I, I do appreciate see. it because usually yeah. he doesn't warn me of the things I he usually says don't. until it <laughs> yes. falls apart. So I do appreciate that. And I was shocked that it ha- I didn't even notice that there was any issue. You know, like there, I couldn't tell a difference whatsoever. And that shocked me because going yeah. through a VPN, you would expect doing this kind of live video feed back to back, you know, like, cause we're not doing a stream over the internet. We're doing like peer to peer, which requires big connections to do and a VPN is what I would not typically expect to allow that sort of stuff. So the fact that it does is very, very cool. Fantastic. Uh, The other thing I'll say, uh, having used this just for today, so I don't have a ton of experience with NordVPN, but I'll come back is the mesh net didn't seem to work as well on a Linux connection to my phone. It was kept saying that the, it connected, it found Mm -hmm. it, they found each other perfectly but when I went to transfer files, it just kept saying it couldn't find the other server, even though they were both showing in the connection thing. So I think there's some work from NordVPN that they need to do, but it's it's minor things I think they could fix pretty easily. And they want to be a part of this community. So let's welcome them with open arms. And, and uh, we I'm want really you to excited. be part of it too. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited, NordVPN. Welcome aboard. Hope you brought cookies. I like cookies and cupcakes. And I, I hope cupcakes. you brought enough cookies for everyone. Yes. Hope you brought cupcakes. <laughs> Vanilla and cupcakes. Hope you brought muffins. Blueberry muffins. Blueberry, muffins. banana nut, you know, whatever, anything. It's fine. As long as it's a muffin, not a cupcake. <laughs> Make it a cupcake. Check out the Tux Digital channel where we have this mashup of which one's better, cupcakes versus muffins. <laughs> we went to scale, and I asked in the interviews yeah. for every single interview, <laughs> you would expect me to ask, you know, just normal questions, but I decided not to do silly this nonsense. special. Yes, Ryan and I came up with a bunch of silly nonsense questions, and of course, cupcake versus muffin. We actually came up yeah. with those questions while we were working out at the gym in our business. That's true. Yeah, that's true. That <laughs> See, that's that we are so efficient that we're 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 getting gains and we're setting up interviews. That's right. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Jill, tell us about <laughs> this amazing game. Yeah. So, what happens when the garbage pail kids style art meets volleyball? Awesome. Well, <laughs> awesomeness and volleyball pals is what happens. <laughs> that sounds very weird. Yeah, it is. It is very weird, especially me who has been a, a lifelong volley, beach volleyball player and I've played it, played in tournaments and everything. Oh, yeah. And that's right. Yeah. And especially for Ryan because he's a garbage <laughs> pail kid. <laughs> <laughs> garbage pail kid collector michael oh oh Jeez. my bad my bad yeah. you were not on the cards okay i get yeah. it i get it <laughs> so volley pals is a chaotic cartoon style arcade volleyball game with local multiplayer for up to four people so so don't expect bump set spike on each side <laughs> it's basically get the ball over darn as it. fast as you can i have no idea what that means but darn it <laughs> I was about to say, Ryan and I totally get that. And then he just completely ruined it (laughs) because I also don't know. (laughs) So I know, okay, I know what the spike is and I, I. Bump set. So the bump is this and then the set's this. Yeah. And then the spike is the spike. spike. Okay. I did. Oh, I did it. Yes, you did. I'm very proud of you. So athletic. For those who are listening to the audio only version, I did show in the video how to do it. I would not be able to do it whatsoever, <laughs> except the spike maybe, because I could just reach up and hit it. Yeah, and, you know. yeah you're nice, nice and tall. Yeah. You're nice and tall. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not nice, but he's tall. But I had the advantage How of dare you? being short. <laughs> I mean, based on the garbage pail kill, like I said earlier, <laughs> so fair enough. <laughs> I had the advantage, even though I'm really short, to digging the balls closer to the ground, because I can get to the oh, ground much quicker. That. Oh, that's And that's so a lot of the tall guys, and sometimes when I be playing uh, doubles, two man on a side. 
a lot of the tall guys wanted me because I was good about, you know, uh, digging and picking up the balls from underneath them. Nice. And in fact, sometimes through their legs. <laughs> Chill. And that was a thing. I Jill's played. so athletic. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's that's, so, fair. that's Jill's impressive. Jill's diving in sand, going under legs, doing backflips, triple <laughs> Probably. jumps, cartwheels, all kinds Aww. of crazy. I stuff. just want to. I just I realized something that you when you said something about being nice, and I I want people to know that we are just doing like like, like some friendly banter. We actually <laughs> are friends, even though yeah. we're giving each other a little bit of, of a hassle. But I wanted to bring up something that happened at scale, oh, no. which was oh. pretty hilarious. And this was I I had no idea what was happening for like the first half of it. But this person came up to us and said to to Ryan and Jill that. They liked our show, but also felt like one of us was a little too mean to the other one. And they were referring to Ryan. <laughs> However, they were also talking to Ryan. So Ryan decided to blame everything on me and point. To, and, and then that person had only listened to the audio version, not yeah. the video version. So didn't know which was which. So he took That's the whole so time funny. to blame me. And then I turned around and heard like, only the last 10% of the conversation. So I was super confused for those who are fully aware. This is Michael. Yeah. I, I'm Michael. <laughs> and this not, is Michael. No, that's not. That's not. This no. This is Michael for those listening to the audio. And that is Ryan. And that Michael is, is mean to me sometimes. This is, this is false statements. Right? Calls me things like garbage pail kids and stuff. Yeah. So we, okay, that happened to this today. Yes, yeah. I'll, I will give you that. <laughs> Our, but typically, our, 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 I'm the we're one all Michael on the other AI end. in Chat GPT. Yes, yeah. the Michael AI. I think the weak thumb thing, which by the yeah. way is pretty funny. Hey Ryan, just a quick note. Do you remember where the weak thumb thing comes from? Uh, it was from a split keyboard thing or something that you said sort you of do. Yeah, it was yeah. too hard yeah. to push or something like that. No, you said it was too hard for me to push. Yeah, I well, never said anything you about have weak it. Weak thumbs, but yeah. it was the System seventy six keyboard that we gave away at scale. Yeah, there you Man, go. that's like that's a right. part of history right there. Exactly. Whoever got that has a piece of show history. Exactly. Yeah, I know. We didn't tell them that, but <laughs> the week I forgot to celebrity. until this conversation, actually. Yeah. That's really So funny. it's even it's even better. So you, you yeah. not only did you get a cool keyboard, you also got a piece of history of destination. Of destination Linux. Oh <laughs> Michael's weak weak thumbs make celebrity status. <laughs> Jill, savage. Jill is Please, so Jill. savage. Wow. I mean, for for see, for those who are, are curious, Ryan and I are giving friendly banter back and forth. Jill is just super mean to us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Jill, goodness. please, can we get back okay. to this game? Okay, so <laughs> on the track of the game Volley Pals, it's designed as a really fun party game with each level featuring different themes and mechanics. And it's basically like simple flight arcade volleyball where you hit the ball and pass it to your opponent's field. However, in Volley Pals, you can also do many other interesting things. Like there's, a, there's one a map that lets you use portals. And so you oh, can launch cool. the ball a lot quicker to the other, your opponent's side. It's all rock, <laughs> paper, scissors. I know I can yeah. beat Michael in that. He yeah. always challenged scissors. accepted. <laughs> accepted. <laughs> and you can increase the height of the net. There's all kinds of fun things you can you can uh, do during the game. And I thought the character design and court design is just really cute. And yes, it does look like gar <laughs> the characters do look like the garbage pal kids. Garbage yep. pail kids. And the game is really easy to play and smooth and the mechanics are fun. It's just, I, I found it a joy to play. <laughs> and, but of course, I recommend using a controller or the Steam Deck to play this as your fingers will become raw using the keyboard because <laughs> I did try and play with the keyboard at first. <laughs> I wonder if that would be bother for Michael though, because Michael, you play Rocket League, which is like the constant click, 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 click all over the place. Your fingers probably wouldn't go raw. Like yeah. This one. I mean, I use the controller for Rocket League anyway because. It just works better. But I actually, there's a lot of games that I think the controller works best. And there's also a lot of games that the keyboard works best. Yeah. And I think it just play whichever, use whatever device that works Use best whatever for the you game. want. We won't touch yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people, okay, for, don't use a controller for a first person shooter. You're going to get destroyed. Yeah, absolutely. But in Rocket League or in this game, controller seems to be the best option. So there you yeah. go. You know, that's actually not true, that advice you just gave there, Michael, anymore. Uh-oh. Because the video game companies, like for Modern Warfare and stuff, have put so much aim assist on controllers that in a lot of cases, people who are playing keyboard professionally are moving 
to controllers because the aim assist is so overcompensating oh, for well, the controller. That's, Isn't that actually, interesting? That's interesting yeah. and disappointing. Yeah, yeah. it is, you know, actually. It, there shouldn't... You really should just detect whether you have a controller or not and just say, hey, play, put controllers with controllers, put you yeah, know, yeah. The, the, yeah. T- the keyboards and PC and mouse and with other people who use PC like that. And uh, But also, for people who are curious about this game, it is t- currently on discount for 20% yeah. off, so you can get it for three ninety nine until March 23rd. Three ninety nine. Yeah, the Steam Spring Sale. What a deal. Free. <laughs> free. <laughs> and there, there's also a demo available of one of the maps. And it's actually in Volley Pals is in early access. And the developers, Nesu, is looking for community feedback to improve it. Look awesome. at that. This awesome. community is becoming so important. <laughs> Everyone wants our feedback. NordVPN wants our feedback. Games want our feedback. Yeah. They're very important nowadays. Everyone wants the open source team's feedback. Exactly. And also, just real quick, for those who are listening to the audio-only version, you definitely need to check out the video version for this episode, because in the gaming section, Ryan and I played Rock, Paper, Scissors very quietly, and... We don't know who won, Michael. Edit that in right here (laughs) awkwardly, because you told people who won, but now they won't know. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't (laughs) say it. Okay, cool. So we're going to pretend that I didn't say it, and the edit will show that as being Whoever fact. Whoever wins, wins. You have to look. Someone to- won. We played Someone. rock, paper, scissors. Our community's <laughs> about to win with our software spotlight this week, exactly. which is my <laughs> Vagrant. <transition>. Yeah. <laughs> Vagrant is a tool that lets you build and manage virtual machine environments. It works on top of virtual machine solutions like VirtualBox, Hyper-V, VMware, and also Docker. Definitely go check out Vagrant. This is a really cool tool. I want to do more in this. So some of the use cases are for development environments, or if you want to set up sandbox environments for testing, you could use Vagrant to spin up and destroy VMs in minutes. And maybe you could make a video game out of it where it just spins up VMs and then pew, 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 destroys them. Who knows? Maybe a little bit excessive That's a good of idea. your, maybe. your hardware to be just make it sending up fun. VMs to destroy them. Why can't you make work fun, Michael? Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. So we're gonna make it where every time you uh will cut, you do rock paper scissors, it creates a VM on whichever one c- was successful. Yeah, and then destroys it with a laser. With a la- nah, okay, sure. Shark with laser eyes. Increase productivity parity. <laughs> you can mirror Shark production lasers. environments by providing the same operating system packages, users, and configurations, all while giving users the flexibility to use their favorite editor, IDE, and browser. So Vim users. Mm-hmm. Can you still use Vim? Vi users, you can still use Vi. Michael, uh, Microsoft Word, you could still use that. That is not IDE. what I use. That is uh, not what I use. Microsoft Notepad, Microsoft also Paint. Also not that one either. Any of those you can use, Michael. N- neither of those. I, I <laughs> Front only... Front page. <laughs> wow. Jill, you're participating in Ryan's nonsense, and I and, and it's, it's throwing me off, Jill. It's throwing me off. So what well, I... Improves w- development setup time and... It has declarative configuration file describing all the requirements and builds through consistent workflow. So this is a really cool tool to check out if you're into setting up VMs and you need a bunch of VMs that you need to set up quickly across different environments and things. Check out Vagrant. And since we're talking about Vagrant anyway, let's go to the tip of the week, which is also relevant to Vagrant, and that is Vagrant provides the ability to auto-complete commands. Currently, the bash and ZSH Saying that quickly is very difficult, so that's Zish. why I was very... ZSH. ZSH. Zip it. Zip it. Zip it. Exactly. Zip it. Shells. These are shells that are supported by this by Vagrant. And these can be enabled by running Vagrant, Autocomplete, Install, TacTac, Bash, and TacTac, ZSH. And you can also broadcast the commands that you want to run across multiple VNs, VMs with Vagrant, like you can with terminal, like terminators and stuff like that. So there's a lot of things you can do in Vagrant that we already talked about, but there's even ways to make it even more powerful and more convenient by using autocomplete and, of course, broadcasting about across multiple VMs. More power. Aww. More power. <laughs> so a huge thank you to all of you. Without you, we would not have been able to do all of the amazing shows that we've done that led us to meeting Jill, that led us to Scale, mm-hmm. and meeting all the amazing people there at Scale. So a huge thank you for supporting us by watching or listening to Destination Linux, however you do it. 
We truly do love your faces. Yes. And you can join us on our Discord by going to tuxdigital.com slash Discord. And if you want to watch the show live, you can become a patron of Destination Linux. Actually, you become a patron of everything now because we've consolidated our patronage into a single network patronage. So go to tuxdigital.com slash contribute to sign up. You get to watch live. But if you're not able to watch us live, you also get access to the unedited versions of the show. For those who are only listening to the audio or the video versions after being published, there's a lot of great content that you're not going to be able to see, including this episode where we danced for no reason. We dance. And if you want to mm-hmm. see our dance, and you do, I know you do, go to tuxdigital.com slash contribute to do that. And you can be become a part of our patron-only post-show, which happens every week after the show, after the live recording. And you get to hang out with us in that patron-only post-show every week. Tuxdigital.com slash contribute to and sign you know what out. else, Michael? Mm-hmm. When people came to our booth and had swag on, it made such a different impression on us than someone who just came and had someone else's show or something else exactly. there on yeah. them. So you need to get swag is what I'm saying. You need to get one of these hats or you need to be like the other hundred people at the show that had the Jill shirt. <laughs> the Jill, like, okay, to be fair, it is a great shirt. So It is a great you know. shirt out there. Or the Wendy shirt or the also Michael shirt. shirt or the Josh shirt. Geek shirt. You've got That's so okay. many Lovely. great things. How do we get this stuff, though, Michael? Like, is it just you have to wish and hope that the gods will find favor <laughs> in you and send that one down? It is an from... option. It's okay. not going to be very effective, but it is an option. But right. I think if you want to have a more effective way of doing it, you can go to tugsdigital.com slash store, and you can get all cool, all sorts of cool swag there, like T-shirts, hoodies, mugs, stickers, coasters, hats, and so much more. TuxDigital.com slash store. And a special thank you to Dare Hans. Yes. Who, who um, has been such a huge supporter of, our, uh, of ours and gave us munchies at our booth and oh, gave me some I goodies those. at the Linux Chicks booth. And he did a great job running the open source career day at scale. And he but sends thank us you a so lot much of for your support. And yeah, he sends us, yeah. All our calendar information for upcoming uh, conventions and events. So yep. <laughs> make sure to check out all our incredible shows here on Tux Digital. We have the Pseudo Show, This Week in Linux, the DOS Geek Channel, Hardware Addicts, Linux Out Loud, GameSphere, and our virtual Linux user group, Linux Saloon. And head to DuxDigital.com and subscribe to all these incredible shows. And don't forget to leave a rating on your favorite app so others can discover the power of open source and keep those penguins marching in the full Monty of Linux and open source awesome sauce. Everybody have a wonderful week. And remember that the journey itself is just as important as the destination. Thanks, everyone. And by the way, the Yay. reason why we're not live is because of me again. So sorry, I've got to travel in the middle of moving we understand sorry everyone <laughs> it's ryan's fault oh of course <laughs> it's okay ryan thanks jill Aww. we'll see you next week people where we will be live because ryan will actually be able to be there you're right unlike yeah. who knows well we'll yeah we'll see yeah we'll see. <laughs> we might have to do another pre-record oh, but if that ryan. happens again we will let the patrons know so they can join us maybe if it. there's time and time yeah. zones allow for well, that to happen we're so proactive and <laughs> plan everything so far ahead of time surely it will work out that is true yeah. i mean we did decide to do this uh yesterday and we picked the time <laughs> i think was four hours ago so we, yeah. we're pretty good at doing stuff ahead of time.